when the fire starts to burn. And it starts to break the spread. When the fire starts to burn, right? And it starts to break the spread. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you all how I edit my Instagram pictures. And I did a what's on my iPhone video last January, and I did like a brief how I edit my Instagram pictures, but since then, it has changed tremendously, like everything from the apps I use to the theme of my Instagram, like everything has just changed. So I decided why not just do one video dedicated to how I edit my Instagram pictures. And I really hope you guys kind of learn something from this video. I don't normally do videos including my iPhone, but hopefully you guys kind of like it and let's get started. So I'm first going to start by showing you guys the apps that I typically use when I go and edit an Instagram picture. So I have one folder dedicated to all of my apps and inside this folder I have the apps Afterlight, ViscoCam or VSCO Cam, however you'd like to pronounce it. Facetune, Square Ready, Pic Collage, and We Heart It. And the apps that I use more often than not are the first four. So the other ones are kind of just there, just in case I need them. So I'm kind of just going to go through the process of how I edited one picture in particular that is on my Instagram right now, and I really, really liked how it ended up looking. So I'm first going to go into the app Afterlight, and this is the app that I typically do all of my color correction on. So I'm first going to open up the picture, and this is the picture that I'm going to be doing. And then I go into the color correction toggle, and I first press on brightness. I like to brighten my pictures to the point where it kind of just looks like it is really sunny out and this picture in particular was taken on a day where it was cloudy and snowing. So I will typically boost up my brightness to around 49. It always varies on the picture but 49 looks about right for this photo. Then I go into contrast and contrast really helps to kind of clarify the subject that is in your picture. So in this case it's a person but it can also be a building or an animal. So again the level of contrast always changes depending on the picture but for this one I'm going to go to around 52. It ranges. Then I'm going to go into saturation and saturation is super important for making your colors a lot more vivid. So as you can tell the railing on the side of this picture is supposed to be red but since it was so dreary outside it doesn't really look all that red. So I'm going to boost up the saturation to around 55 and the picture already looks so so much better. So I am super, super happy with how this looks so far. After I cover those basics, I kind of just like to mess around with the highlights, the lowlights, and sharpening my picture. This picture in particular was really good with sharpening because since it was snowing outside, when I sharpened it, the snowflakes became a lot more visible. So I like to sharpen that up to around 40 or so and that looks just about right. Next I'm going to go into the effects tab and the two effects that I typically use are in the guest category and they are called Russ and Horine and I'll either use them separately or I'll use them layered on top of each other. So the first one which is called Russ looks like this and it's not very harsh on the picture it just adds a nice faded effect on top of it so I really like how it looks. This is how it looks before the effect and this is how it looks afterwards. The next effect that I like to use is called Horine or Horin or however you pronounce that name and this is what it looks like. As you can tell this effect is much stronger that's why I kind of like to not leave it at 100%. I will typically lower it to around 40 or 50. After I'm happy with the effects that I put on the picture, sometimes the effects can lessen the colors yet again. So I like to go back into the color category and boost up the saturation a bit more so the railing looks red again, not so much of like a dark purple or whatever color that looks like. <laughs> So that is basically it for what I do in Afterlight. So afterwards, I will just go and save this to my camera roll, and then I will open up Facetune. I don't use Facetune like other people would think that people use Facetune. I don't use this app to make myself look like I'm skinnier, obviously not, or like I am a different person, or like I don't have any blemishes on my face. 
I don't use this app for anything like that, believe me. So I would just open up the previously edited photo and this is what it looks like. Obviously you guys just saw it. The first feature that I will typically use is the whitening feature and I really loved how the whitening feature looked on this photo because of all the snow in the background. So I took the whitening feature and then I zoomed in a bit to the snow on the side. Then I took the whitening tool and I just kind of went over the snow. And since the snow in my town is not the newest snow, it's kind of been sitting there for a while, it doesn't look the cleanest. So I kind of like to switch that up and I like to make it kind of clean or clean looking, I guess. So I will also whiten all the snow in the back and this just makes a night and day difference, honestly. And then there's a bit more snow on the sides, so I will whiten all of that. And afterwards, you can zoom back out and just show a before and after. So this is how it looked before whitening all the snow, and this is how it looked afterwards. Definitely doesn't look unnatural at all. I'm actually very, very happy with how it looks. And then I will kind of go into the whitening feature and whiten my headband maybe, because it kind of just looks a bit more of a cream color because of all the effects. So I will whiten that up, and that is basically all I do for the whitening tool. And since the sidewalks in my town aren't all the best, these kind of look kind of cracky and they have some gum on them. So I wanted to take this smooth feature and I kind of just smooth out the floor a bit because it evens the color of the sidewalk and kind of blurs out all those pieces of gum and snow that's on it and all the stuff that makes the picture look not too good. So after I have done that, I think it looks so much better. One last thing that I like to do with Facetune is I like to take the details feature and I will really zoom into one of my clothing pieces. In this case, I like to do my scarf and I will just detail my scarf a bit just to make it pop out a little bit more. I think doing this makes the picture look really high quality or more high quality than it does when it was taken on the iPhone originally and I really, really like how it looks. So after zooming out, that is what the picture looks like. I think it looks so, so good and I think it looks a lot better than how it did beforehand and I'm super happy with it. I just, I don't know, I really love it. It's a great picture. Thanks, Em. <laughs> After doing all the editing that I desire, I will either save it to my camera roll or export it to another app. And any other apps that I would typically export it to are VSEO Cam or Square Ready. And on my Blush for Beauty Instagram, I have been trying out a square theme because I really like how it looks. And in that case, I would not use Square Ready. However, sometimes I will export it to VSEO Cam. And I will have my VSEO profile linked down below because I have been falling in love with this recently. I'll kind of just show you guys how it looks on this app, but I think it looks so super, super cool. It kind of just allows you to post all the pictures that you want and it looks really cohesive and nice. This app also has some really awesome effects that you could use. So what you would do is you would go into the library tab, I believe, and press that little plus button. Then you can import whatever photo you would like. And I'll just show you guys some of the effects that I like to use on here. So it kind of just depends on the picture that I'm editing. But the number one effect that I like is HB2, just because I think it looks kind of nice. But then I will always lower it because I don't want it looking all that harsh, you know. So that's what it looks like. Other effects that I like using include F2, I believe E7, yeah, and then A9. All of those effects aren't too harsh and I really, really like how they look when I put them on some of my pictures. That is all for how I edit my Instagram pictures. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys kind of enjoyed how I did this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and you liked what you saw, make sure to press that little red button down below. It's on either one of these sides, I promise. It's it's there somewhere. And you guys should totally press that if you want to see more fun content from me and from Blush for Beauty XX because it's always a party over here. Not really a party, but like, we like to have fun. Let's be real. That is it, and I love you guys very much, and I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye! Mwah.